Welcome back to Inside Views and our spotlight on the University of Western Sydney's Kingswood campus. Fun fact, Kingswood actually has the largest number of individual learning spaces out of all the UWS campuses. Really? I would have thought Parramatta had more. Nope. Another fun fact, it is objectively the best looking campus in all of Sydney. You can't prove that. Okay, but they do have an awesome music department. And what an excellent segue to our next segment, which just happens to be on some innovative uses of music. Yes, so my name is Alison Short. I'm a lecturer at the University of Western Sydney in the um, School of Humanities and Communication Arts. I teach music therapy and I'm also a researcher. Um, I have quite a few years of experience in research as well as in music therapy. Music therapy is a practice where we're looking at the needs of the client or the, the consumer. Um, patient, depends what word is being used in what context, it might also be a student in, in an educational context, but we're looking at the needs of that particular person and figuring out how we might use music to help address those needs and help the person grow and develop or heal in one way or another. When um, we first met Simra, um, her muscle control was really, really weak, wasn't it? And um, when she was playing, she could not even hold a, a drum stick. And we worked on the um, limb control for quite a while. So the fine motor control come, came in just this year and we started working with our fingers to play the piano. The music is simply a vehicle to address developmental goals. Music therapy can be used with many, many populations. As I alluded to, it can be used in education, uh, for example, special education with developmental delay. Um, but it can also be used in a range of other situations and many different ways that music is used. It could be playing instruments are being involved, it could be structured where there's a part in the song for the person to respond and play the drum. You know, Johnny plays the drum, now played, that type of thing, so it's part of activities like that. But it could be free improvisation, let's make the sound of a storm, let's hear the sounds coming in the distance, let's hear, what, how are we going to do thunder and lightning in musical terms? How is it going to recede into the distance? Not only is it a bit of fun, but it's also a good way of getting some emotions out if people are feeling quite angry or things like that. It's a good way to get some of the feelings out too. The Nordoff Robbins Centre at the University of Western Sydney is um, the only centre of its type in the Southern Hemisphere. There are some other Nordoff Robbins Centres, for example, um, at New York University and, of course, in the United Kingdom and also through Asia but um, this is the only centre in Australia and in the Southern Hemisphere. We are interested in telling people about music therapy and recruiting people for the future who are interested in music therapy. One of the things we've been doing at the University of Western Sydney, um, we had an innovative subject that we taught this last summer, a summer course, on music and wellbeing. And we attracted students um, who'd come from psychology, from music and I think there was one from journalism. Um, people that were interested in music that wanted to know a little bit more as, as an extra summer course but out of, the, um, out of the people that attended more than half indicated that they would be interested in doing music therapy in the future. And it's an exciting profession because you never quite know what's going to happen. You do know the principles to apply. There is evidence about what we're doing but there's always an element of creativity in there too about the way you do things in music therapy and um, the most remarkable changes in people's behaviour and development can be seen in music therapy. It, it is just spectacular sometimes.
incorporate so many different activities. We've got the 3D printing hub. It includes robotics, uh, virtual reality and programming, uh, a fab lab kind of component with laser cutting machines and lathes, um, CNC machines and routers. So the equipment is available. And what we'd like to do is, is have the equipment available to the wider community. So it's great that it's here for our students, researchers, people across the university, but we want people to be able to connect and engage with us. Um, high school students, teachers, workshops, um, after school activities, holiday programs, you know, really it's limitless, but um, we'd like to be able to offer the space that people can come in, work on a project here, maybe it's a final year design and technology student at high school that needs to get something designed or printed. Uh, we've got academic staff and technical staff, our students can act as mentors and you know give them advice on projects as well. So um, there's great opportunity here in the makerspace, we'd really love to be able to open it up and uh, offer it to the community as well. Yeah, so we were first introduced to the space um, with through our first assignment when I first started industrial design. Um, the assignment was based on using the printers, so we had to make something. It was a small little part, um, four parts all together. Uh, I made a little car. Um, from there, they've gotten more printers um, and the better quality maker, maker bots that we've got behind us. Um, and each assignment has involved some form of that technology, so we use that in our assignments. Um, so I made the light that's behind me here. Um, that was last year. Um, that was based mostly around that, so we had to have um, a minimum of four parts made. Uh, it just made it a lot easier to print all of the parts for it. It was meant to be a modular design, so um, each one of the shapes used is a module, and then we could either print them or get them reproduced by hand, but it was just a lot, lot simpler printing it compared to actually forming it by hand, making a mould or something like that. It just made it much simpler. Um, you, if you just want to come down and have a look at it, anyone can come down, it doesn't cost any money to come in and have a look at it. And yeah, it's just open for everybody, not just the university and that. It's basically a place that you can come down here, you have a concept, and you want to put it into reality and it's where dreams come true, where you'll be able to have what you have in your head and be able to hold it in your hand. You know, I've actually been down there to the Makerspace and it really is incredible. They're so welcoming and they just want people to work with. Yeah, that's so true. And they have all that fantastic equipment and it's criminally underused. I really recommend you head over and check it out. We're going to take a small break, but when we get back, we're going to be checking in on what's been happening on all the other campuses. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>